Earl Dean, who do we got with us today? We're so excited to have this this up and coming artist. He's an independent artist, and he um, was living in Houston, Texas, and he's been singing all of his life. And we're so honored and blessed to have him. This is none other than Eric Burrell. Welcome to the Wake Up Morning Thank Show with guys. Dr. LT and Robert Earl Dean. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> and, 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 and it's you okay because you, you're not the first to not be able to unlock their phone. So we're just glad to have you. <laughs> it, 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 it's, 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 it's okay. You know, we have lots of folks that are iPhone challenged. and I'm one of know, them. You know, I'm one of them. You know, and we just pray we just, for me. Pray for me. Yeah, we yeah. just thank God that you were able to make it. We noticed that he's been using, he's been looking at social media where they say, have your camera up high. It makes you look thin and everything. Right. He, you see how high his camera is up. <laughs> You know, you know, but you don't need to do that. You, 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 you look like you're in good shape. Yeah, he is. Uh, 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 brother Eric. Now, now, where are you at? Because it looks like you're in a classroom. I'm actually in one of the offices in my job at my job right now. Okay, okay. See, our, our interviewees, they come from everywhere. They come from work. They come from cars. They do it everywhere. Yeah. We gonna make it work yeah. because we are pushing and promoting the good news of Jesus Christ. Well, Brother Eric, you know, now that we got past the challenges of this morning, right. who is Eric? And and tell us a little bit about how you started in this thing called gospel music. Well, uh, like uh, Robert said, I'm a native of Houston, Texas. Yeah, well, we love I pretty Houston. much have been singing all for mostly all of my life. Mm -hmm. um, um, I've been around people like the likes of all of my life, Kathy Taylor, Yolanda Adams, V. Michael McKay, mm -hmm. um, some of gospel, Houston gospel royalty. Um, I also uh, sang for almost eight years of my life with the Grammy Award winning Memphis based Orlando Draper and the Associates. Hold up. So, Hold uh, up. You sung with Orlando Draper. That was a good friend of mine. You, you lived yes. in Memphis? Yes, I did. Okay. That's one of, one, one of the greatest motivators, one of the greatest encouragers in yes, the world. Yes. Okay, well, since he done brought it up, I want to deal with the rumor. Uh, rumor? About, you always got a rumor. Uh, yeah, I'm going to deal with the rumor about okay. him and the associates. Uh -huh. I heard that when you joined the associates, you you wanted to uh, change the name uh, uh, to to uh, uh, Landry Draper and the associates featuring Eric. <laughs> you know, you know. I just want you know. Help me out with that rumor. There got to be a rumor. I you don't know, believe that. I, I, I just will say, did, I don't no, believe he that. Didn't, I don't believe that. You know, because you know how you Houston folks are. <laughs> you know, out of some of uh, Michael McKay, Kathy Taylor, Yolanda Adams. Now you need to just add my name to the. You know, I right. add value to your group. Oh yes, he does. Coming from Houston, he does. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go on and say, unfortunately, I've never heard that rumor. Okay, Thank okay, you. okay. Cle Thank you. Clear it Orlando up. Orlando Draper here. and the associates were well established and already Grammy nominees when I joined. So they did not, they didn't need me to add, um, add any sauce to an already um, saucy, well saucy established <laughs> artist. Established ministry. Yes, sir, you're right. Yes. Let, let's talk about um, coming up in Houston, because like you said, you have Kathy Taylor, you have Yolanda Adams, you have Reese Joyner, you have yes. um, Sean McLabor, you have um, the Walls Group, you have... Angela Bennett, you have Carol Allen Simmons, just so Betty Ransom Nelson, Betty Ransom Nelson. Yeah. Um, Kim Burrell. We we we're gonna ask them that at the same time after you answer that, we wanna know what's the best barbecue joint. We're gonna get you in trouble. What's the best barbecue joint in Houston? Now that answer all those other questions, then tell us what's the best how barbecue was, joint. Yeah, how was it coming up in that environment? Because Houston has some of the greatest musicians as well. To be honest, it's very, very intimidating. I'm gonna be honest. Mm -hmm. uh, it is very, very, very intimidating. My home church uh, was the Evangelist Temple Church of God in Christ. He's Kojic. 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 And we used to have third Sunday night musicals. And all the artists we have just named all came through uh, and sang there. I pretty much know them all on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm talking about you come to our church on a third Sunday night, there's no telling who you would hear. And to see where a lot of them are today, mm -hmm. uh, it's unbelievable. Rhonda McLemore, another yeah. one, just phenomenal, phenomenal mm -hmm. talent out of Houston. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was very intimidating, very, very intimidating. But but how was it on the development and learning? Because from those people, you can gleam as well. 
I really didn't get my development and learning until after I left Houston and mm -hmm. moved to Memphis mm -hmm. uh, and joined the Associates. I was professionally vocally trained by Kelly Muller Smith, First Lady of Miracle Temple. But a lot of my training uh, did not start until my late twenties, and that was with Orlando Draper and Associates. Okay, wow. now answer my question about the barbecue joint. Uh, I don't, to be honest with you, I really don't know any really good uh, barbecue joints in Houston. But I can say Tops Barbecue in Memphis is really good. Okay, Tops so, Barbecue so you in Memphis. Tops down. So when we go to yeah, Memphis, when, when we, we go to Memphis, yeah, you know. And, and so uh, uh, this this one other thing, you know, um, you done named all these greats that came through your church, but you didn't mean, you didn't mention not one word about Leonard and the Leonardettes. Who you that, go that, with the Leonardettes? Who you go that, with? That, the what, did you just exactly. say who? Exactly, my same thing. Who? Did he just say who? Who? You don't know who? Leonard and the Leonard X? I don't know him either. My don't Jesus. Know. Boy, they was a group. They were a great group in the imagination. <laughs> they were a great group in the right, imagination. In the imagination, hallelujah. In, if the, you he could, in the heavens. If you could only imagine. <laughs> in the heavens. If you could only imagine. Right, right. So how right. how how was it for you growing up Church of God in Christ? Because we're both Kojic boys born and raised to the core. How was it growing up? to be honest yes be honest i didn't like it at all okay did not like it and explain explain uh without going into too going into detail uh way too much of you cannot do you cannot do versus this is what you can do right this is how far you can go um yeah. way too many stipulations on living your life I understand about being saved and, you know, and all of that stuff. I, I completely understand that and I get with that. But it's the what you can't do. Well, you can't do this. You can't do that. You can't do this. You can't do that. This is a sin. That is a sin. That part really, really got on my nerves. See, see, see the, that's see fair. the, and that's see, fair. see the problem is, is that you was in Houston, but oh, and see, if you're born in the United States, you're blessed. And if you live in California, you're doubly blessed. But if you happen to have the chance to be in San Diego, you're part of the chosen few. Because the way we were brought up, our pastor, Bishop J.A. Blake Sr., he literally uh -huh. prepared us for the world. I mean, yes. literally every third Sunday night, the teenagers got to go up for YPWW and sit with the bishop. And he, he gave us that opportunity to ask any questions that we ever wanted to ask. He would let us ask. He made sure that we were exposed to different denominations and churches so that we would not be afraid of worshiping with other people. Right. And he would like say, when you go to school, you represent the kingdom at school. Yeah, y'all go to the dance. Just know how you can dance. Don't be up there dropping it like right. it's hot and everything exactly. else. So we were very well established and very, very well rounded and prepared for the world. And so uh, I'm in music today. I'm in uh, entertainment and everything today because Bishop said uh, when we were seven and eight years old, I heard that you young people want to play music. So he said, everybody who want to have play music meet here on Saturday. And all the young people signed up. He brought in a professor to teach us music. And then he brought everybody their musical instruments. And he said, and he didn't just say you can use it at the church. We used it in school and everything else. But what, what the benefit for us was he then toured us. You know, everywhere he'd be like, his brass brand, and he was like, we're going to L.A. He would put us on tour buses. We're going to uh, um, Oakland. Uh, we're going to Vegas. We're doing that. And so for us, you know, in the chosen city, praise the Lord, it was very fun, you know, especially youth congresses. Well, but this dude. <laughs> well, well, well I, I, I get what he's saying as yeah, well. Yeah, I do, I do. But, but what, I, what I do say is that I thank God for the tough, um, upbringing Kojic because it, it helped me to cheer from a lot of things that I could have gotten involved in because I believed That's in true. the Holy I Ghost keeping me part. and I believed in um, having boundaries. Mm -hmm. Many of my counterparts who didn't grow up Kojic or, or apostolic because Pentecostals period back then were stricter. Those people were they, they weren't Very as strict. educated as mm -hmm. they are now. So their whole thing was anything that was going to mm -hmm. separate me from the world then we didn't want to do it. So I understand both sides. They, mm -hmm. weren't over, they were overly strict, but it protected you from a lot of things that you could have been involved in. I agree, because my mother protected me a lot, mm -hmm. <laughs> a lot. I actually, would because my uh, I was raised in a coaching home. My mother and my grandmother are both Church of God in Christ. Uh, and I pretty much came from a single parent home. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And my mother actually did not allow me to stay out past 10 p.m., 
uh, until I was like 18, 19 years old. Mm-hmm. And I mean, that Ours my curfew was no, no, no. And I also had to hang out. The people that I really hung out with was the church, uh, the young, the youth at the church that I was going to. Now, 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 yep. now you know, you know that I'm going I'm to I'm ask the question because sure. uh, this district, because we couldn't hang out after 10 o'clock. Unless we was with the church and we was at the church musical, the midnight musical, uh, or right. after that. So it's like, all my friends are like, how you stay out at two o'clock in the morning? Well, we had the church musical, then we had the midnight musical, yes. then we all went to eat, then we came home. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So our That's curfews right. were really exp- expanded because of where we were. Let me ask you a question, you know, um, because see, this is really going to help you out. And I think you're going to like it because most Kojic mothers, can make a, a a darn good sweet potato pie. Now, now okay. my question is, did the sweet potato pie save your life? Because they wrote a whole song about it, I'm going to stay saved. I'll put it to you like this. My grandmother, God rest her soul, she made the absolute, and she was cogent to her heart. Mm-hmm. She made the absolute best sweet potato pie and sweet potato pond. All Those right. were like, so those are like our to go to desserts during Thanksgiving mm-hmm. and Christmas for my grandmother. So yeah, yeah. So he wow. saved your life, right? Mm. Mm. Praise him, Jesus. Okay, so he he was in church twenty four seven like us mm-hmm. for every day of the week almost. Mm-hmm. Now, how was it when in high school? Wait, 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 wait. But you were still saved as long as you didn't get caught. <laughs> no, I'm gonna tell you the truth. I backslid so many times in high school. <laughs> Moving on. Right, but but we but we we all did. It, it was called maturing. But guess what? God had his hands on all of us. Yes. Because one yes. thing about God, he sees the final product. Mm-hmm. So how right. did it, how was it going from Houston to Memphis? Because there are two different cultures. Um, actually, to be honest, Memphis has some of the most underrated singers I agree. ever. I agree. And I'm talking about from the associates to Ted and Sherry to Shay Norman, yep. Chantel Norman, the yep. Barnes family. They are, uh, Stephanie Bolton, uh, they are very, very underrated. And what I mean by underrated, they are, it was intimidating as well. A a, a quick story, Uh, Orlando wanted me to lead a specific song uh, with another leader by the name of Michael Hawkins, and uh, who is a phenomenal male vocalist. I know Michael. And I was in rehearsal. I'm not going to lie, I completely bombed just my nervousness alone and Orlando literally snatched the mic from me because I was just that scared and he didn't want to see me crash and burn. Right. And so it was, it, it really wasn't a culture shock at all to be around such phenomenal singers. Mm-hmm. And so, but it was very, very, it was intimidating as well. You had Robert in that choir that could sing too. Yeah. Robert Day. In fact, it was Robert Day's song because Robert had already left uh, the associates. I'm like, dude, you want me to try Come to sing behind, right. behind Robert Day? No. And, then, and then you had Bacchus. You had the, the lead um, last name. Rodney Backus. I mean, some his, of the best singers. Uh, his Pastor brother. Sherry Livingston. Yes. Oh, God, yes. Betty Ann Hardwick Landers. Yes. Angela Bethany. I mean, just a phenomenal singer. Yes. Um, his brother, Tim Backus, was my roommate when I moved to Arkansas to go to Philander Smith before I went to University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff. So I oh, knew wow. I knew that the associates, associates were coming out with that very first album before it came out because Tim Backus kept wow. talking about the associates, the associates, and about maybe um, six months later that Jesus Touched Me album came out, the very first project. Yeah, by do Olympia. it again. Do it again came out, and I was like, oh, my God, this is who he was talking about. <laughs> yes, and they're still phenomenal to this day. I mean, you put them on stage, I mean, it's like no time has gone by. So let me ask you a question, I, and it's going to be two-part. Um, the, the naming of the group The Associates, did did Orlando Draper ever tell you why he called the group the Associates? No, um, I never found that part out. No, I didn't. I just know that's what he just named his choir. So before they even became world renowned, uh, I know that's what he just named his choir the Associates. And they came out of Memphis State. He had a gospel choir at Memphis State. Yes, he had a gospel choir, and, out of and it State developed out of into the Associates. Mm-hmm. Yes, because they, they were very well trained. A lot of them went to music schools. Um, they high, did. high school, especially Overton High School. Overton High School, that's yeah. that's the school. Yes, I mean he so many phenomenal singers out of that particular choir, 
to be honest, he was way ahead of his time because he was way ahead of they, to be honest, the entire group yeah. was way ahead of their time. And and he was such his his death was such a shock. Uh it was almost like a rug puller. Um in um, Nashville. For a lot of us. It was it was it was it was devastating. It was in Nashville, right? Because you guys went to Bobby yeah, Jones. We were in Memphis. He was in Nashville when he transitioned. Right. That is true. Right. He went to Bobby Jones show so here's my here's my next question and yes. um and and this is you know again it's not a rumor it's just a question uh-huh. um um when you when you got into the group and, and this this is a real serious question um and we lost uh orlando how did it impact you and how did the group or how did you guys recover um me personally how i found out i actually found out on the news I will. In fact, I mentioned this in my book. I found out on the news um, uh, right before the Price is Right came on, and uh, I was living with a friend, his wife, and I. I actually had to call my mother. I was so devastated because I had just left from Houston like a couple of weeks before. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were trying to get Orlando Drake and Associates to my home church in Houston for a concert, and my mom was like, and she was laughing on the phone. She was like, "Son, they're just playing a joke." This is the rumor we were just talking about getting you all there. She was like, calm down, call me back in a few hours, and you know, we'll just make sure this is all a joke. My mama seriously thought it was a joke. I called her back a few hours later. She said, son, are you okay? She was like, yeah, it's true. She was like, uh, it's on the gospel news stations down here in Houston. And I was like, no. She immediately asked how Mother Draper was, yes. how Trina was, Trina was how yeah. his sister and nephew were. Mm-hmm. She immediately asked about them, and and it, it, it just it messed me up. Now, how we transitioned, it was not easy. Uh, Mother Draper took the reins uh, immediately, mm-hmm. but it wasn't an easy transition, especially to see First Lady Trina Smith, his fiance, take the reins. Such strength. I don't see how she did it. I honestly, honestly don't. I don't see how she was able to take the mantle that she did so quickly, mm-hmm. but it was not an easy transition. It was hard. There were some rehearsals that we cried. I mean, it, it wasn't an easy transition. But I mean, for the associates to stay together so many years after he passed uh, says a lot about the congregation of singers. I, I remember I remember when I received the phone call, I had just moved back to San Diego in 96, and I believe he died in 98. And yes, people, he did. people know how close him and I were because he told me, I brought you guys to Arkansas, to the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff, and you guys premiered for us, that album that you guys did live in Chicago with Yeah, 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 okay. Yeah, Got Yeah, a yeah. Feeling. Got a feeling. You guys sung it at the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff, and I was on the student government that brought you guys for the concert. He said, we, we letting you guys hear these songs before they come out. So there was a very close relationship with I and Orlando. He used to call me Legions. And I was like, okay. stop calling me Legions, because he would see us places, because you, you know he used to be on the... Um, on the board of Arkansas State University's Gospel Choir. Yes, he did. And, yes. and you guys sung in their programs, and my college choir from Pine Bluff will be on program with you guys and Arkansas State as well. I got chill bumps talking about Orlando because it still affects me. I think I got rid of his number maybe five or six years ago out of my out of my um, phone book. Yeah, I, he was one of the first ones I ever knew that had a cell phone. Right. And that was years ago. And, and he was so... This man, I, we, I sung in a group also in Arkansas, um, um, Otis Richmond in the inner court, and we were in Monticello, Arkansas, and he came as a clinician for a workshop. So he, he even did his concerts when you guys had your annual um, concert during the Memphis Convocation. Yes, anniversary. He, he added an extra day for my college choir to be a part of it, so he did a Friday one time so that we He was could very sing. innovative. He was extremely innovative yes. and extremely unselfish. Unselfish. He, he believed in pushing talent. Yes, that sir. That's just his gift. Yes, sir. He, he believed in that. And if he saw that you had any type of potential, any. Um, he would push you to your to your to your max at that particular time. And that says a lot about him. He was very approachable. Yes, sir. Um, um, he was so how can I say this? This might not make any sense, but he was very unarrogant when he could have been. When he could have been. He was he could have been very arrogant, but he was not arrogant, no arrogance at all. But what I love most about him, he made sure that the associates were the exact same way. Yes. Because 
we represented him. So we had to be approachable. We had to be friendly. After we got done with the concert, yep. we could not immediately go rush and get on the bus. We had to stay and talk to people that were fans, just not him, but the choir. So he was just, he was really yeah. a, just a beautiful human being. I got, I got chill general. bumps. Listen to you, I got chill bumps. And those that are listening all across the country, if you're starting choirs or groups, this is how you should be as a gospel artist. We should be different than the world. I should be able to approach you. I should be able to talk to you because your ministry many times start after you get off that stage. After you get off the stage. Where somebody needs you. And people don't know this, but he used to travel with Thomas Whitfield. And yes, he, he is he is the reason that Yolanda Adams got signed with um, um, the music label out of, of Gospel, Sound of Gospel Song. out of Detroit because he told Yolanda, there's a girl in Houston that you got to hear. And Thomas Whitfield was looking for a solo female solo artist to sign and he was special guest at Southeast's anniversary that year when Yolanda yes. sung and he signed her immediately after that concert. And if you notice, first of all, I will tell anybody this, I am, I call her Aunt Yolanda, but I'm a huge fan of the Yolanda Adams. And one thing I will say about Yolanda Adams is she has and always been one of the most, even with her superstar yep. um, status, she is one of the most humble and approachable yep. people you would ever want to meet. And she has never forgotten her home roots. No. She's so respected and loved in Houston. It's almost funny because, I mean, she's another one that could have an air of arrogance, mm -hmm. but she she does not. And that's something that I, I, I've taken from her as well as Olanda. So always be humble, always be approachable. Um, always, even though you you never know what you might be having a bad day. Right. But always smile. Yep. Try to have a good spirit because you never know what the next person is going through. And because so, you're in the public's eye, you still have to, you know, have a good spirit regardless of how you're feeling. And I took that a lot from uh, Orlando and Yolanda. That's true. So I just want to ask my, my final question for the day, you know, and I need you to be truthful with this. But, mm -hmm. but, but are you a little bougie? Am I a little bougie? Yeah. Uh, I will put it to you like this. I was not raised in the hood. I was <laughs> raised in, um, I grew up in Missouri City, Texas. At that particular time, it was middle class when okay. I was growing up. Mm -hmm. I went to Willow Ridge High School. Mm -hmm. um, but am I bougie? Um, <laughs> I was raised by, she don't like this. Ooh, and I thank God she's not listening. She's not that technical. I was raised by a very bougie mother and a bougie grandmother. So mm -hmm. I do have a, just a little bougie. Did, 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 I see. So I, I thought, a lot of so your, I, I so your discernment was on. Yeah, yeah. I thought he, your was you know, on today. you know, I, I was thinking, you know, that he would be drinking his tea with the pinky up, you right, know. Right, right, <laughs> right. right. <laughs> now, now let's talk about you as a solo artist because okay, we can we can go on about those two best friends because Yolanda mm -hmm. and and Olanda was best friends. Mm -hmm. They were best friends. And Baba yes, and Baba and, Baba and, Baba. and all of them. Yes. So let's talk about you as a solo artist. Okay, well, uh, first of all, again, thank you guys so much for having me. Um, I started my solo career uh, ooh, in 2005, mm -hmm. a, a couple of years after I left the Associates. Um, and I took a hiatus for almost 10 years. And at the beginning of the pandemic, right around 2020, because um, I basically had really had given up, but, you know, I don't, I don't like to get too deep, but I was actually working out in the gym. And, you know, God sort of kind of chastised me. You know, I've given you all these gifts, mm -hmm. you know, songwriting and a poet and a voice. I may not be the greatest singer, but I am a singer and I come from a lineage of singers. Yes. He was like, it's time for you to reemerge. And so um, I uh, spoke to a very good friend of mine in, in Memphis by the name of Calvin Barnes, phenomenal talent. I come from a phenomenally talented, gifted family. Mm -hmm. And I told him I wanted to, um, you know, just reemerge. So I took one of my original songs and redid it. Wow. Wonderful, which you all have. Right. And I decided to just re-release another uh, EP and do some more new music in a couple of years. So um, I've been a solo artist now uh, since 2005. Uh, it's not easy. No. Uh, especially now, but uh, with, uh, with social media. But I dare not sit on my gift anymore. It's just not fair. Forget to, you know, the world is not fair to God, especially when he's given me the gift. Right. And I, I encourage you because the Lord allowed you to go through the lineage of people that you work with. First of all, starting at your own home church. That's that's a great foundation. And many of you young artists 
want to be in the spotlight, start at your home church. That start grooms you. That prepares you. That teaches you how to go before people. It teaches you how to be, how to develop your your sound. It teaches you how to make eye contact with the audience. All these are big variables that help you in your solo career and this music industry. And well, I bro- was blessed. I was uh, able to release Wonderful again a few months back. Mm-hmm. I released Trouble Don't Last, my second single, about a month and a half ago. And I just released another single entitled Those Angels. And the EP will actually be out, Eric Burrell, Rising Phoenix, on September the 2nd. Well, all right, my brother. Wow. We, we love. How can people connect with you? And then can you introduce to us this new song? Um, they can connect with me on Instagram, even though I'm not there a lot but also on my Facebook fan page, just mm-hmm. type in Eric Burrell and my fan page. My manager, her name is Latasha. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know her number by heart. It's on the Facebook fan page. Right. But again, I'm on Facebook, Instagram, as well as TikTok. And I'm about to get a new Twitter page very, very soon. All right. And so introduce and the, this great new this song. song that wonderful. You... Introduce it to our audience. Wonderful. Actually, that is just the song. It's not nothing spiritual about it. Uh, I just wrote the song. And um, the original version, I wasn't too happy with. That right. was produced by another producer. Okay. So I got with Calvin, and uh, we read the, redid the whole song. It's just one of the songs that I just wrote, because songwriting is one of my gifts. Right. So right. it was just a song that I wrote at home, and uh, it's a nice little groove. Yes. It's not real, real churchy. It don't have to be, nice brother. You have people that are non-church that listen to this show, and church people that like other things outside of traditional music. That's what makes gospel music so profound people try to box yes. us these category and awards people try to box us but you cannot box a huge god you just can't no, do you it cannot. Just can't. amen and i want you to continue to use your writing skills yes as we just say that leonard and the leonard oh, is Lord. coming back he's gonna pray about and them. we're gonna need right. you he's gonna to pray bring about your it. little bougie self pray and about write it. us a song pray about it but this is none other than Eric who? Eric Burrell. And the song is called Wonderful. Wonderful. Right here on G-O-D Radio 1. Dot com. As I look.